Okay, sounds fantastic. Right. Said a request has been sent to share my screen. Let's see. And, uh, Here we go. You... I think we're good now. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> okay, sweet. All right. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll give myself a, a brief intro before I hop into anything. Um, but yeah, very excited to be here. I've been on Monday Connect a few times, and it's always a great group. I uh, love connecting with all of you. Uh, just a brief introduction to myself. So um, I'm actually from Arizona. I, I think I'll, quite a few of you are based in Utah or have lived in Utah, but um, I'm here in Arizona, Mesa area, and co-founder of Coconut VA. We actually rebranded recently uh, to Coconut, uh, just Coconut. Uh, Coconut.com is still taken, but it's only $975,000. So hopefully we'll, we'll nab that soon. <laughs> uh, but for me, I've been helping founders for, for most of my career. Um, just outside of, just out of college, I went full-time into a startup. That one was uh, Venture Validator. Started that with uh, Eric Espinosa. Uh, we sold that about three years after we started and then went right into Coconut. And we've been in Coconut for about three years. Uh, Coconut was much, I'd say much more successful and we went a lot quicker uh, than Venture Validator. So we got to about $2 million of annual recurring revenue in two years. Um, and, and we're still growing today. So excited to, to share a little bit about my experience um, with growing uh, as a remote company. We've always been very fully, fully remote, uh, even us founders. Eric, when we were you know building in the early days, he was usually based in California, but he would also travel all, all over the world. Um, a new co-founder that we onboarded recently, his name's George. He's based in Texas. So I'm very, very experienced or very knowledgeable about what it's like to be in a remote company. We also are a VA staffing company and we source exclusively from the Philippines. Uh, so the rest of our internal team, they're all based in the Philippines. Our kind of day-to-day -day CEO, COO, uh, she's based in the Philippines. Uh, Riva's actually on this call today. She's our, our marketing manager. She helps us with all of our webinars, all of our content. Uh, she's based in the Philippines, our account executives, everybody um, on our team is based in the Philippines. So I'll go over a little bit about my experience with that and, and how we've learned how to grow uh, in a remote way. So one question that I would love to ask the group um, is how many of you are bootstrapped versus funded? And if you could just put that in the chat, um, you can just type bootstrap, type funded, uh, or type venture, whatever you'd like to do. I'd be really curious just to see the split here. And I think that will actually kind of affect how I'm pitching my my content today. Uh, so if you could put that in the chat real quick, just say bootstrap or funded. Uh, I would love to see what kind of a split we've got there. Um, okay, we're getting a few responses now. Taylor Bench, I guess we've, we've got some funding there. Bootstrap, bootstrapped. Um, we've got somebody that does funding. Nathan chatted with him. Bootstrapped, okay. Bootstrapped and funded, awesome. Uh, okay, cool. So, so far, majority bootstrapped, and that's great. We we are also bootstrapped. We've never taken uh, funding dollars uh, for Venture Validator or for, for Coconut, um, but I will go into the content now. Thank you for, for letting me know uh, kind of that split. So, Mastering Remote Growth. growth. Uh, we're going to talk about a few key focus areas, um, one of those being hire the right people, um, one of those being build the right systems, and then the last one, uh, the last one that we're going to talk about today near the end will be the actual practical tips of, of how do you actually do this? How do you actually give the right value to the right people? And so before any of that, I wanted to focus in on conducting customer interviews. So briefly go over this. It may sound boring to you, but this is absolutely vital as the first step before trying to remote to, to grow your company, because most of the time, especially in a remote environment, you don't have a lot of visibility into what your client, your customer actually needs, what they actually want. I'm sure if you are a founder, you have heard this before, and you've likely also procrastinated doing this. Uh, I know Taylor focuses a lot on this. You know, He talked about starting several different companies in this quarter, and they're going to go through whatever it was, eight months of market validation, right? And so there's a huge need to figure out, okay, what do your customers actually need? Because all of the growth that I'm going to talk about today, the growth strategies that I'll talk about are all focused on how do you give the right value to your clients, to your customers. And so this is the approach that's worked for us 
because we've noticed that we work with a lot of business owners, a lot of founders uh, that do just need help. Uh, they need they need more knowledge. They need more wisdom on on content like this, actually similar to this. How do I grow my company? How do I increase sales? Or you know other things like how do I how do I delegate to an executive assistant? That's a topic we talk about a lot. Um, there's many other things that a founder just doesn't know. You know, this could be their first, second, or third startup, and there's still things that they are are working through. Uh, so that's what the biggest thing I would recommend before getting into growth. You really, really need to know who you're talking to, who's your audience, uh, and what do they actually need? What are their pain points? So getting into a little bit of the um, the actual strategy here. So the first one is being to hire and train key personnel. So Obviously, we are a staffing company, uh, but there are many other ways to find the right people. You can work with a staffing company like us. Obviously, you can post a job on LinkedIn. You can post a job on Indeed, anywhere that you need to. But knowing the critical roles um, for whatever growth strategy you're trying to uh, you're trying to pursue. So for us, again, we are focused on giving value to founders, and the best way that we found to do that is to do online remote events very similar to this, where we are just giving value out for free. Uh, we're not expecting anything from our audience, but we know that we are trying to build trust uh, with the people that we we want to work with, right? Our, our prospects, our ICP, our ideal customer profile. Um, so again, for us, that would mean, okay, we need to hire somebody like Reva, right? She's our marketing manager. She's going to be helping us build a lot of content out. Uh, and so for somebody else, that might mean more something like paid ads, right? So you're need, needing to find a paid ads specialist or, uh, you know, a digital ads specialist, right? Somebody, or maybe that's even an agency, but that is a key step into this whole strategy of making sure that you have the right people. At the very beginning, you might be able to do a lot of this on your own. Uh, for example, George, he's my co-founder. Uh, he's done a lot of partnership work in the past. And so for him, it, it came very easy uh, to do, to do you know, webinars, presentations like this. He knew who we needed to partner with. And so if you already have that specialty, that expertise on your team, great, that's fantastic. Uh, you can you can run with that, but very quickly you'll need somebody to, to delegate that whole process to. And so a few things that I'll mention here over on the left, uh, you know, first off what I've talked a lot about already, which is identify the critical roles, identify exactly who you need to delegate to, define their exact responsibilities, expectations, uh, invest in training, development, establish a mentorship system, and then use visuals and examples for clarity. We could go into each one of these. I think they're all fairly self-explanatory. Um, but again, you know, I, I keep using Reva as an example because she's here. Uh, but you know, this is something that we've, we've had to do uh, with Reva and our entire marketing team is first we need to figure out, okay, hey, we need somebody like a Reva, like a marketing manager to uh, to set up the content for us and then to uh, do all the logistics. It's actually kind of like Hannah here today. She's a coconut VA as well. And she manages a lot of this midday uh, connect process. So she helps create the content. She helps, uh, you know, manage or coordinate with the partners, with the speakers. Uh, and then through that whole system, you're able to delegate more and more off of your plate onto somebody else's plate. So let's go on to the next slide here. Again, the rest I think is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, a few things I wanna focus on here. For us, what we've noticed be incredibly helpful, this is where the bootstrapped versus funding aspect really comes into my mind. Because if you are a funded company, I've never been funded, so I can't speak from experience, but in my mind, it's a lot easier to, to, to some degree throw money at the issue uh, because you're able to hire more people in a shorter amount of time. But for us as a bootstrapped company, you know, we we recently 2X our, our growth, but now that means we need basically to 2X all of our systems um, and all of our people, right? So we have maybe 80 booked calls a month now where before we had 30. And so now we have more clients needing VAs. So now we need to hire more hiring managers and we need to find more uh, sourcing associates to help us find the right talent. Uh, and then we need to, after that, we need to hire more account executives to, to take the added client volume. And then we need to hire more HR people on the back end to handle the, the added volume uh, or the larger client base, right? So for us, it's important that we focus on one department at a time, right? So we, we focus on, we need to get that top of funnel in, 
in line first. We need to, we need to grow that top of funnel. And then we can, again, kind of go down the line. Then we can focus on the sourcing aspect of our business, the matchmaking part of our business, the HR part of our business. For you, that could look very different, uh, but that's what we've had a lot of success doing is we first set priorities. This is the one area that we want to focus on. We allocate one to two months for that department. So again, at the very beginning, it was the top of funnel. So we need to focus on marketing, getting our name out there, getting more people into the door. And then after that, you know, just step by step. So one example strategy is uh, for us, we, we shifted a lot of our focus directly to marketing because we just wanted more people to hear about Coconut, to have a relationship with us or a parasocial relationship with us. Uh, and then after that, we can focus on the rest of the funnel. And of course, tracking results throughout that process. Uh, for us, you know, that meant there was a, a, a difference in the conversion rates, right? So we used to do a lot of LinkedIn content. We still do a lot of LinkedIn content, but now we have a lot of other leads coming from uh, our, our, our events, our webinars, our online, um, our online events and our online education. And so for us, it's important to track the results, see if those conversion rates are any different uh, than what they were in a different strategy. And then of course, celebrating progress, making sure that we recognize, celebrate that with uh, the whole team. Okay, and then I'll go uh, next into systems. I love systems. I tried to make sure that I, I didn't talk too much about this because I think I would get too much into the nitty gritty. So I made a very simple workflow here, um, but I would love to chat with any of you about, about our internal systems and what softwares we're using today. Um, but there are an insane amount of tools out there uh, for literally every step of your process. So again, for us, you know, it, it could be throwing online events, giving online education. Uh, for you, it could be digital ads. It could be just more content approach. It could be video content. Uh, and as you know, you know, with AI especially, there's an incredible amount of tools out there and a lot of free tools as well uh, that could help you automate a lot of your workflows and a lot of your systems. So again, if you need any help with that, feel free to reach out to me. I can uh, see what I can do to help you. Um, but building the right systems to handle this, these new growth strategies is vital because again, you need to be delegating either to, to people, um, to your marketing managers, to your salespeople, uh, to your paid ad specialist, whoever it is, and or delegating to the right systems uh, or automating. And even though we are a staffing company, I always recommend people focus on automation uh, before delegation. So if there's a process in our in any part of our funnel or any part of our backend process that can be done uh, by, you know, by Zapier or by some kind of yeah, automation software, um, then I would, I would rather go with that uh, because in the long run, that's going to be more sustainable uh, and also more scalable. All right. So, the last thing I want to go over today um, with, again, mastering remote growth, how did we achieve actually adding that $500,000 of new revenue in six months? It's all about, again, giving value. So for us, just to kind of give you a sneak peek into our strategy, a lot of what we did was made up of two different parts. One, partnering with the right people, with the right organizations. And then I'll go over a little bit uh, in depth onto the slide. But then the second aspect of that is actually uh, engaging with the community. So firstly, we need to find that those, that those community partners, people that can um, get us in front of the right audience. For us, it's founders, business owners. So we've partnered with Gust. We've partnered with Forecaster, uh, HubSpot for startups. We've partnered even with JP Morgan Chase. Uh, there's many partners out there that are excited to give value to their audience. It's similar to Taylor Bench, even with Midday Connect, right? He's built an amazing community here and he provides a lot of consistency, right? Every single week we can all show up, get to know each other uh, and, and learn something, right? Get value. And so for him, he's always seeking, okay, what, what can I do to give the most value to my audience? And so those are the type of people you're looking to connect to because you have some expertise. For us, it might be delegation, automation. For you, it could be totally, totally different than that, right? And that's great because for Taylor, he's always looking for other ways to provide value to his audience. So again, those are the people that you're looking for is how can you help and how can the material and expertise you have, how can that be supportive and of value uh, to other audiences and finding those partners uh, where you can kind of fill in the gaps. That's where really the magic happens. 
Uh, and then again, you're getting in front of new people. Uh, you're getting in front of new faces and people are seeing you as the expert on that topic. So I know I'm pretty much out of time at this moment. So um, go over this last slide here, leveraging events for community engagement. For us, um, we have been throwing 10 to 12 events per month uh, since we started this growth strategy. And, and it's been a lot of work. You know, We've had to find partners for almost every single one of those events. Um, and again, we need to be finding new audiences. We aim for 100 plus attendees on each one of those events. And then it's a whole growth strategy, right? This is why in one of those slides, I talked about focusing on one department at a time. If you're gonna do this right, if you're gonna do any growth strategy right, um, I mean, paid ads is another example, right? Where I've heard some people say, yeah, I tried paid ads, but it didn't work out for me. But once you dig into it, it's like, okay, well, you really didn't give it a good enough try. You didn't really get deep into it uh, enough to really know if it was effective for your business. And I've heard, I think Alex Formosi talk about this where, um, you know, he, he gives advice on paid ads. And if you're not making a hundred different creatives uh, for your ad, then you really don't know if that, that marketing, that messaging was effective. And, you know, so for us, it might be a hundred plus attendees or a hundred events over the course of the year for your ads. It might be, I need to, you know, do a hundred different creatives and spend money on each one of those to see which one or two of those actually are successful and then dump all of your resources into that one ad for us, it's similar, right? We are trying to find the best content that resonates with the most people, especially with our ICP, and then focusing down in on that, uh, in that, in that niche topic, and also trying to get maximum exposure uh, to people who are interested in that content. Um, all right, and then the very last practical tip I'll give you on this. So we we have definitely found success omni-channel outreach. Um, you know, again, we're trying to reach out to community. We're trying to reach out to to partners, we are trying to reach out and develop relationships with an incredible amount of people. And so for us, it's been very effective to do that one-on-one -on -one outreach across multiple channels. It needs to be casual, relatable messaging. I do not recommend spamming people. I do not re recommend anything close to that. Um, but we do live in a day and age where attention is limited. And if you can get your name, your face in front of the right people at the right times, um, doing everything that you can to make that happen uh, and to kind of to force those those touch points with people uh, is incredibly valuable and we've we've seen the ROI from that. So that is the overall content uh, that I wanted to share today. Um, very, very quick plug for coconut. I do not want to take away from from the meeting today, but we we are coconut hire remote pay month to month. It's basically having a an employee on subscription to some degree. Uh, where we will find the right person for you, plug them in, and then we can replace that VA for you if you ever need it, or we can scale up or down your team as you need it. Uh, we are trying out a new offer recently. Uh, it's 40 hours of week, uh, 40 hours of free work, um, and it's basically a one week free trial of a VA. And so you can kind of feel out, is a VA right for you? Is it gonna be helpful in your business? Uh, no pressure to take us up on this offer. Um, but we are happy happy to to offer this and extend that out to you guys uh, if you're interested. All right, thank you so much. I would love, would love to connect with you uh, on LinkedIn as well. Um, and I'm happy to to answer any questions. I saw a couple questions uh, come up in the chat. Um, but yeah, anything anything you want to say here, Taylor? Thank you. Thank you very much, Tyler. This is awesome. We do have some questions in the chat, so cool. um, we can start there. Um, let's work awesome. backwards, maybe. Um, okay. and then if ever, anyone else has questions, they can throw throw their name in the chat or throw a question in the chat, and we'll just use that as our cue. But perfect, Landon, do you want to come off mute and ask your question? Fill in any context there. Yeah, for sure. Um, so Tyler, partnerships. Um, yeah. How how do you uh, make those enticing? To the potential mm. partner, what's the upsides for them? I have yeah. not come across a really good uh, formula for that conversation. Yeah, definitely. Um, for us, you know, it sounds simple, it sounds cliche, but it really is just the the discovery. Uh, so every time we hop on a, a partner call, we're just saying, hey, we would we'd love to explore a partnership with you. Uh, here's examples of what we've done in the past to add value to other audiences. And then once you're actually on the call, 
say, Hey, what are you guys, what are you guys trying to do? Right. So for, for Gust, uh, it's one thing for HubSpot for startups. It's another thing. And we try to figure out, okay, what content or, you know, what value can we bring to that partnership to actually be beneficial to them? So it really is kind of custom to every single partner. Uh, but I'd say as a general rule, we do try to figure out ways to incentivize them. So we actually have tried out a recent like rev share agreement uh, with our partners where if they send anybody our way, we'll actually give them a certain percentage of the revenue from that referral. And, you know, again, that's that's just free money, right, for them. Uh, and if, if they trust us, if they like us as their kind of VA staffing partner, that's just a no brainer for them. So I think there are general generally accepted and generally exciting things that you can add to your to your partnership agreement say hey here's the things that we will provide to you but there's also other more custom things like gust for example they're they're just crazy about getting as much content in front of their audience as possible and so that's what we provide to them right we're we're always trying to find new topics uh, that would apply to that group specifically hubspot for startups uh it's kind of similar but they're more focused on uh discounts for their founders right so we try to figure out, okay, what kind of, you know, free trial, right, offer could we put together for that specific partner? So hopefully that gives you a little bit more context into that. That's interesting about getting to know those customers well enough to know what they want so that your partner yeah. feels good about that. I like, like offering that to them. I like that. Um, could you go through, as as other people are putting their questions in the chat, could you go through some of the tools and like, I kept asking about that as you were putting up different slides like this one, yeah. what is your outreach tech stack? What does that look yeah. like? And do you have suggestions on implementing that? Definitely. Um, and it, it is, it's difficult. It's a whole process because you need to make sure that you have a good outreach stack, but also that everybody talks to each other. Uh, so for example, one tool that we use is instantly.ai. Um, they're great for cold email and we use that heavily and we've seen a lot of success in um, promoting events through instantly or through cold email you know typically like we all get cold email right and most of the time we hate it unless it provides value and so if you use instantly just to pitch hey you know I could hire a VA for you like that's going to fall on deaf ears but if you say hey Here's how we got to 500,000. We have, here's how we added $500,000 of revenue in the past six months. That actually sticks out to people, right? And again, you're just trying to figure out the actual value that you can provide to people. So anyway, that's one tool, instantly.ai. Uh, another tool is sales message. Um, that's more of an SMS tool. So sales MSG, that's a great uh, SMS tool where you can do outreach campaigns. Uh, you do need to make sure that you're compliant there. Uh, or you will get fined, uh, but making sure that you get double opt-in from the from your audience. Uh, but that's a that's a an amazing way to get higher reply rates and higher attendance rates uh, to your events. Um, another tool that we use right now is actually HubSpot. They have a great founder discount, so it's like ninety percent off the first year. I think fifty percent off the next year, twenty five percent off perpetuity in perpetuity. So if you're a startup, that's a fantastic discount, um, and that is a obviously a massive CRM tool that helps you kind of combine all of this data into one place. So you're not reaching out to the same people over and over again. Uh, and then there are a couple of LinkedIn automation tools. Some people are hesitant to do that. You don't want to get flagged. You don't want to get banned. Uh, but if you do it right, um, they they really work well. So Walaxy uh, is one tool, W-A-A-L-A-X-Y. And then also Wizza. Wizza is a great tool to grab contact information from LinkedIn. Uh, and then Walaxy is a great way to do automated um, LinkedIn outreach. So those are the top tools that we use that come to my mind. Very cool. Um, it looks like Riva put in the trial period link as well in the chat for those of you who are looking for that. A um, couple of Anyone else have other questions? I'll just keep going through the ones in, in the chat that I put in there, unless you want to come off mute or throw your question in the chat. Um, yeah, I do. Uh, just one question. Thank you, Tyler, yeah. for the presentation. It was really insightful. Uh, just one question related to how different would you say the remote employee hiring program has tilted in the recent years, right? 
uh, I would take the two contexts. Earlier, the industry was more specified into background industry experience, looking out for virtual employees having experience in this working in the same industry versus what we are seeing in the recent market changes. Like people are more experienced in certain specific tools. And when coming to hiring and right talent for the uh, like your business, some people prefer more uh, employees with having experience with a specific tool that a company wants yeah. to employ. So how different would you say it impacts in the remote work scenario? Yeah, interesting. Um, I obviously, yeah, we, we've had to make adjustments and we've seen that, you know, when clients come in, uh, they have, we ask them, like, what are your non-negotiables and, or, you know, what are your non-negotiable tools? Um, and really kind of just a, a fun fact, we've had a recent <laughs> inquiry come in that say one of their non-negotiables is they have, they have to love golf and they have to understand golf and they're not a golf company and they're not a golf apparel company or anything, but they need to understand golf. So it's, it's funny what people come up with there. Uh, but yeah, to, to touch on what you're saying there. Yeah, we, we definitely track that uh, and ask for that. What tools uh, do you want your VA to be experienced in? And luckily, you know, most of the people that we are staffing from the Philippines, they've already been working for U.S. companies or Australian companies, international companies, and they're typically using all of the same tools that we are. Um, and that's something that we can actually vet for or, um, you know, that's that's like our set criteria. So before we even introduce somebody to a client, we already know that they have XYZ experience in XYZ tool. Uh, so for us, you know, it maybe cuts out, uh, you know, a few people that, that don't have experience in that one specific tool. And sometimes that's frustrating. It's like, yes, this person takes all the boxes, but they don't know how to use HubSpot, right? They know how to use Salesforce. So that, that can be frustrating, but I agree. Yeah. We have seen a change where people are more, um, more determined to get people with that specific tool experience. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. Yeah. Nathan, you put I do in the chat. Was that I do have a question? Yeah. Thanks, man. So question, what is, you know, I know that this is um this is a service that would be applicable across industries. What's the argument against having every startup use VAs just as they're getting off the ground? I mean, I'm an angel investor and I'm thinking, okay, so why are we wasting money as mm -hmm. we're kind of fumbling through the entire process of, you know, getting laborers to come in and help with, you know, yeah. pushing this project forward? So, so yeah, tell me why, why isn't this just the new model? Yeah, I and there's some obvious use cases that come to mind, right? Like if, if you need a warehouse worker to to pack boxes or you know tape things, like that's obviously going to be an in-person job. You can't hire a remote VA for that. Um, and then you know there are a few select industries where it might be more difficult. So healthcare, if you need HIPAA compliance, you might you know there's just more hoops uh, to go through. But we've we've actually staffed several healthcare people. We've staffed uh, paralegals. We've staffed bookkeepers. So even if your data is you know, you need to keep that very private, very secure. There's ways to get around that. Um, really, I think the one other situation where I feel like it's maybe been difficult for us to hire is somebody that has a really good, strong uh, Zoom presence, and that can be very customer facing, or that can be partnership facing, and really build relationships with people here in the U.S. Um, if somebody's looking to to partner with us, they'll they'll want somebody that they can feel you know very they want to feel you know relatable to that person and even have opportunities to talk to them in person uh but everything else you know all the back end systems um are again managing our automations our tech guy uh for us we even extend that out to our account executives uh our client facing people but i'd say that's kind of atypical um and anyway yeah so everything else i would say that that is those are all other great use cases for vas We've, thanks, Tyler. We've got time for one or two more questions. <clears throat> Anybody have any other questions they would like to ask or come off of mute? Um, last question. Well, maybe two questions then. Um, Tyler, 
you mentioned celebrating and recognizing progress and wins. How do you do that in a virtual first company? Yeah, uh, so a couple of ways that we do that. One is to uh, to celebrate the the person how they like to be celebrated. Uh, people in the Philippines, they I think they're a little bit more shy than a than a typical American, uh, and they don't like the maybe the public uh, facing celebrations as much, uh, and especially definitely not criticism either. So you do need to be sensitive to to who you're talking to uh, and what they appreciate, right? So I I remember even. I think a year ago, Reva may not have taken this, but I remember asking all of our people to take the love language quiz. And there's a love language for careers quiz uh, or, you know, love language professional version uh, where it's, you know, they they kind of adapt that love language quiz to focus on on how that looks like in the workplace. So, you know, gift giving, words of affirmation, things like that, but for the workspace. So that's one thing I would recommend doing, honestly, is taking that love language, uh, you know, professional version and seeing, okay, for this person, what would they appreciate the most? And some people it is, you know, kind of words of affirmation. So calling somebody out, you know, highlighting the amazing job that they did. For us, another way that we can do that uh, is sending gifts. We we think that that's been very effective uh, in our organization to keep retention extremely high. We have about a 97% retention rate uh, among our VAs. And what we do is we send a gift out to them, an actual physical box uh, at their six month mark, at their year mark, uh, their two-year mark, and then also at other big milestones. So if they had a baby, uh, if they just got married, if they hit their wedding anniversary, things like that, just to show that you're thinking about them. Uh, and then obviously with personalization, personalized notes uh, saying, you know, what they've done well. Uh, but again, it does depend a little bit on who you're talking to and who you're reaching out to. That makes a lot of sense. And just so everybody on the call knows, my love language is gift receiving. Just for anybody who's interested. Yeah. Um, Tyler, this is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing this. Really appreciate your time and your presentation here. Um, can't thank you enough. And thanks everybody thank for coming. We'll be here next Tuesday at the same time. So please join us. Thanks all. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you. Thank you.